Deb just ordered some beef ribs. She said she likes to do beef ribs rather than baby back pork. So I'm gonna give it a shot. We'll see how well this works. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is open them up and put some dry rub on them. Oh yeah, and she ordered a side of beef, we're crying out loud. She said, oh, I'll get a brisket. How much is that thing? How, many, how much weight? It's 18 uh, pounds. Yeah. I an, ordered a 10 pound one. An 18 pound brisket. We'll have to do that another day. I don't think I'm ready to tackle that. That's going in the fridge. So let me get these prepped and show you what I'm doing. Real simple rub uh, that I'll put on these. All right, these are just um, beef ribs and they were 225 a pound, so not too bad. Uh, I went ahead and made up some rub the other day when we did the ribs. That's what this is and I'll be using that as well. Salt, pepper, garlic, a little bit of paprika, a touch of cayenne, onion powder, pretty simple stuff. Oh, and a little bit of uh, Tony Catrice because I like that. All right, let's get this opened up. Thank you. I always like to give these a little smell, make sure everything smells good. Shouldn't have a smell, that's exactly what we want. That's good. We're gonna try and get this membrane off the back now. On baby back ribs, it's pretty easy to do that with the back of a spoon. Not so sure about this, so we shall see. So I'm just trying to get, them, uh, get it started underneath the membrane so we can grab hold of it. Unfortunately, it's not easy to do when your hands are wet from the meat either, but you got a little spot started. I'm gonna keep tucking the spoon under it and use that to lift it up. So I can get a good grip, probably a paper towel to dry it. But if you can get this off of here, they will be much more tender when they come out. I'm not getting it all the way across, but we will pull it back a minute. So unfortunately, I'm also getting some of the fat off of there with it. it. Might take a little bit of the flavor, but I'll do that over the uh, toughness, especially on a beef rib where that's tight, harder than on a pork rib. I'm not seeing a whole lot of that skin on this side, so I think I'm just gonna Take this off and we'll be set. All right, we'll start with a little bit of rub on the back side. You want to typically be pretty liberal with this though. I tend to put more on the front side of them than the back side where all the, more of the meat is. Flip them over and we'll repeat the same on this side. Well, this is the back side of this one, so again, I'm gonna put some on here, but probably not as liberally as I would on the other side. Make sure I got a good amount on this front side now. So I'm just rubbing it in because I want it to be down in the meat, massaged in the meat a little bit. <laughs> so we bought these little jars to put the spices in. They look really cool, but they don't seal it great. As a matter of fact, these are a little bit chunky in there. Just it's starting the humidity starting to kind of get in there a bit. All right, I'll have to clean this up here in a second. All right, these are set to go. I'm gonna go ahead and put them in at 225 to 250. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and probe these so I can keep an eye on the temperature and make sure it's uh, doing what I want it to do while it's in the oven and closed. So let me go ahead and show you what this looks like as we get it started. I'm gonna go ahead and plug my probe into my second port here. But I'm gonna hang on to this, I'm gonna put that into my ribs. So making sure my probe is working, it shows it's 82 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and push it right into the meat here. 
you see that dropping down 70 72 so it's dropping down based on what it was sitting outside here so let's go ahead and get this put in here and I'm just gonna put these uh, meat side up right in here on my rub and just put it right back up on the meat here. Close it down. It's been about an hour and 10 minutes. And again, I mentioned before, I have the primary smoke box at 250. My uh, ribs are sitting at 226 in there, so they're continuing to go. They're looking pretty good. Um, so these ribs are getting really nice. Look how that's pulled back from there. They're nice and tender. I'm gonna go ahead and let this all go for probably another 45 minutes or so and I'll check. All right, we still have our box over here at 250. Um, our probe is showing 250. Our meat is at 248, so it's just about there. These are looking good. Yeah, it's just tender as can be right on through there. So I think these are about ready as well. I think they're ready to pull off too, so let's get all this off. All right, let's check out these beef ribs. And as you can see, the meat has pulled down quite a bit from clearly tender, you know, just to how they're rotating around here. I mean, the bone's pulling right out of there. So definitely tender. This is my first time doing beef ribs. Let's see how they look. So I went ahead and pulled this out and you can see it's got a good smoke ring right around it here. Definitely juicy inside. You can see that. It's not quite as tender as I thought it might be. I mean, it's definitely going in nice and easy here. But when I was cutting it right along the edge of the bone, it was a little bit tough. We'll give it a taste here in a second. So we're pulling some right out of this big set of beef ribs here. A small piece I cut out just a moment ago. Hmm. Wow. The flavor on that is really good. Um, I use the same rub that I put on my baby backs the other day. And as you know, beef ribs are not nearly as tender as a baby back rib. A little bit more chewy, um, but man, really good flavor, good and juicy. Yeah, these are gonna be good. I know Deb prefers beef ribs, so I will get her to come have these. I will say I did two sort of halves. The other half of this is definitely much, much drier. Um, good flavor, but definitely a lot drier. The strange thing is I think that's just due to the fact that there was less meat on that end of the rib than there is on this end where you can see it's clearly a much thicker piece of meat. Well, let me try just a little piece of this and see how it tastes as well. Again, really good flavor, it tastes good. Definitely more dry on this side than it is on that side with the thicker meat. Well, all in all, that was a good recipe. So to give you an idea what that cooked for, it went for about three hours and 20 minutes at 250 degrees, and I was using the competition blend smoke. I put a dry rub on them. I uh, mentioned it earlier, salt, pepper, a um, little garlic, little onion powder, a little bit of brown sugar, a little bit of Tony Catcher. He's just a hodgepodge of dry stuff. Rubbed it on there, had the grill preheated at 250 on the pellet side, um, and just laid them down on the grates with the bone side down, meat side up. That was it. Uh, I checked on them a couple of times. I had a probe in it checking the internal temperature. Um, internal temperature was around 240. I certainly could have taken these out sooner. If I had taken them out around 180, 190, they probably would have been uh, much juicier. 
but I don't know if that had been any more flavorful because man, these things really do taste good the way they are. So that's the way I did these. Hope you guys enjoyed this video on doing beef ribs on the Pit Boss Pro Series combo unit. Thanks y'all. Good grilling.